Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin logarithmic regression, but more specifically, we're going to be looking at the extension from the fair value and making comparisons to prior market cycles. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember to check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com if you wanna know how I am navigating these markets. Let's go ahead and jump in. So when it comes to our logarithmic regression band, I should note that this video is not based on the upper one. Let's just pretend like the upper regression band is not there. We're just looking at the green one right now. And what's interesting is to note the extension from the fair value from one cycle to another tends to decrease with time. But as we also say, every market cycle is different and, and the way it interacts with the fair value can be different from one cycle to another. If you take the percent difference between the, the price of Bitcoin and the fair value on say like the daily time frame, you know, you get something that looks like this. And, and if you try to, if you try to, you know, extend the lines, try to get something maybe sort of in between here to connect, to connect this first one and then this one, maybe sort of that one, trying to get them sort of in between. And then you, you know, you just extend it out or so, something like that maybe. You get this, and I'm just gonna switch it over to the three day so that we can actually actually see what's going on on a single on a single chart. Okay, so the first thing that we're looking at here is again, it's the extension from the fair value. Now I should say that when drawing when drawing imaginary lines, it's easy you know it's easy to tell whatever story you want to tell, right? I mean, that's why you can't you can't take lines and to the you know you can't take imaginary lines to the bank, for instance. If you originally, if, you know, back in this cycle over here, if we had just connected the first two points and said, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to go all the way back up here, we actually didn't quite make it. Alternatively, if you try to get it in the middle, you know, something that maybe looks like that, you sort of leave a little wiggle room for, you know, for, for each cycle and you say, well, I don't know if I'm going to exactly hit the top, but maybe you can get somewhat close. If you connect the first one to the third one and exclude the second one, it looks something like that, okay? So obviously, obviously drawing imaginary lines on the chart, to some degree, they're, they're made to be broken. But to, to sort of gauge, you know, sort of gauge, gauge the, where we could theoretically be, I, I thought there was something that was interesting, okay? Now, one thing to remember is that the logarithmic regression line, the fair value regression line, is a monotonically increasing function. So if the price of Bitcoin were to stay exactly at $31,800 for the next year, this would actually go down. And you might say, well, why would it go down? The price isn't going down. Again, it's because it's the extension from the fair value. And so if the fair value is going up with time and the price is staying the same, then the extension from the fair value has to be going down. One thing I was looking at when, because you know we've made the comparison to 2013 before, if you look at where we currently are in terms of the extension from the fair value, and you sort of just draw a line across and to see how important this area has been in the past, I thought it was mildly interesting. Mildly, mildly interesting. Because this is actually the same, the same area that Bitcoin found support back in 2013. Now, one of the things I, I, I will use this opportunity to say is that a lot of people assume that when I compare this current cycle to 2013, that I'm calling for you know a crazy move in the next in the next uh, or by the end of the year, similar to what happened in 2013. But as we know, in fact, there are a lot of similarities between the cycle, but this one is actually stretched out a decent amount. Okay, so for instance, if we were to you know if we were to look at, at say this chart over here in, in terms of the extension from the fair value. After this major drop down, we then came back up, as you can see in both the one in 2013 and then the one now, we then had a further, when we first had our first capitulation, so we had A, and then we came up B, okay, so this is A, and then this was the 2019 run B, 
And then we came down again, C, and then came back up. But the, you know, the move back up was a bit weaker, D. We sort of did that here again too, C, and then we had a weaker move back up, which was D. And then we sort of had one last capitulation, which in fact was E. And again, the same thing over here. And then following this, we had an intermediate peak within the cycle. And we'll call this one F, okay? And if you follow the, 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 the series we do called Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, we put it out in the first of every month. We've been talking about this exact scenario for the last eight months. So just go back to the first of every month on this channel and you'll see this sort of scenario uh, play out. And then we'll look at this one and say, okay, well, this one maybe is, is F. And then from here, it becomes nothing more than dubious speculation, right? Dubious speculation. Because at this point, you know, some people might assume that we then have to just go straight back up. Like, you know, it has to, it has to do something like this and go all the way back up with it, you know, by the end of the year, by the end of the year, which is, this is what we need to do in order to do that. Something similar to, to what we saw back in, back in 2013. However, you know, if you look at the time it took to go from say, dropping below the fair value to the current, the current, like the current phase of the cycle in 2013, it was a modest 638 days. If you go look at this cycle, it took around 1,039 days. So, you know, if you were to say like 638, over over 1039 you can see in fact that you know this is a completely different uh, a completely different time frame right a completely different time frame and one thing i'm going to pull up uh got to pull up uh, wolfram alpha so we can we can do a little bit of basic math um but one thing we could do if we wanted to further dubiously speculate which is basically all we do around here we could take the time between the next one and the peak and say, okay, well, that was about 150 days from, from that point to that point. And if we did that and we said, okay, well, let's equate it to this ratio and we'll solve for X. Now, some of you are probably having flashbacks back to algebra when you asked your teacher when you would ever need to learn this. This is exactly the time. So we're gonna go 638 X equals 1,039 times 150, okay? 638 x equals 1,038 times 150, and you just simply solve for x, right? You solve for x. And what do you get? Well, if we, if we look to see how many days that would be, it would actually be about 244, okay? 244 if you were to go from, say, the bottom of, of this one, okay? Where would 244 days put us? Okay, well, where would that put us? That would in fact put us in March of 2022. Okay, that would, that would put us in, in March of 2022. Okay, now I should say that March, even for a lengthened cycle would be, would be, you know, fairly short. Okay, I think that'd be a fairly, fairly short. Technically, it still would be a lengthened cycle if it, was in, if it were in March of 2022, but I'm just showing you how some, you know, maybe some basic math can, can help, uh, you know, help investigate, you know, patterns that we may see, see in the charts. The other, the other caveat as well is we actually haven't begun to run back up yet. Okay. So it might be a better, a better time to, to take this measurement whenever Bitcoin has, you know, definitively found a bottom. For instance, um, like imagine, imagine a scenario where, where the valuation of Bitcoin uh, sits at, you know, 31K, 32, maybe goes up to 34K for a few more weeks. And, and then we maybe have a capitulation event later on, or maybe this is the capitulation event. But the, the problem is, you know, we're sort of measuring something in days from, from when we started to gear up and, and go back up. And we don't even know if we're at that point yet, right? We don't even know if we're at that point. For instance, it's possible, it's certainly possible that we could come down a bit more. You know, just because we came down to this point back in 2013 doesn't mean we have to hold the line exactly at that level, but it would be a nice coincidence if we did. In the same way we went up higher back in 2013, we came all the way up to this level, 
0.03, and this one we only made it to about 1.33. You might wonder, what is this metric? Well, again, it's nothing more than the natural log of the price over the fair value. Okay, that's all it is. Um, so in case you were in case you're wondering, it's just the natural log of the price over the fair value, and the fair value is this green line you see uh, at the bottom at the bottom of the of the price over there. So then I would I would look at this and say, you know, if you follow this channel for long enough, you'll know that my my thinking is that a market cycle peak will likely not happen in 2021. I also think that a lot of people will suggest by the end of the year, if we're not looking at new all time highs, that they'll look at it and say that 64K was the peak. And to some degree, you know, they could point to evidence to show that there's a decent case to make for it. The nice thing, as we've always mentioned, is that we always have our theories, but time will elucidate the truth and we will know soon enough, right? We'll know soon enough. My guess, as I've, you know, as I've maintained for, you know, since 2019, is that this cycle could easily extend into 2022. And I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if it also went into 2023. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it went into, into 2023. Um, I just see this cycle from, from so many different, not only from like a data science perspective, but from like a fundamental perspective, it, it makes a lot of sense. So I thought, I thought you guys might enjoy this. Uh, I think that the phase we're sort of in now, whether we hold the line here or we go lower, I think it's, it's basically just going to be gearing up for a move later on this cycle. But as I said, you know, as I've, as I've said, expect this lull in the market, right? We, we went into this saying, you know what? We're ahead of schedule by a lot of different metrics. Expect a lull in the market and let's get through it. Let's get through it. And then we can hopefully look for the next leg up. But for now, the lull continues. And until the trend changes, until the momentum changes, I don't think we can schedule our Forbes interviews just yet. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. We also do sell t-shirts, which you can find a link to in the description below as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to turn on your notifications, and I will see you next time. Bye.